years ago, in the Indian leader Narendra Modi came to Australia. He gave this passionate speech to a huge crowd. Now, one thing I found really interesting about what he said was that he said the key to Western economic success was the dignity we gave to just ordinary work, even if it's dirty or low paid. Now, this meant a lot coming from someone who was a tea seller and rose to become the leader of one of the world's largest democracies. And not just that, one that's rooted in the institutionalized hierarchy of caste. There aren't too many places in the world more status conscious than India. But I think this feature of Western success that Modi identified is in decline. And I'll explain why. One reason is you can see it is the huge increase in disability pensions in Australia, particularly for mental health reasons. And the other is youth unemployment. Now, the disability pension in Australia is over 800,000 people and it costs $17 billion, billion dollars a year. And most of that increase recently has been due to mental health reasons. And on top of that, a lot of new jobs created in Australia are due to the National Disability Insurance Scheme. That created 160,000 jobs in recent years. So we're becoming this nation of the psychologically disabled, supported in terms of employment by carers looking after those people. Now, meanwhile, youth defined by those aged 15 to 24 have almost a third of them either unemployed or underemployed. Now, I think one factor is actually the stigma attached to ordinary work, especially for generations that are sort of primed for aspiration and success. Now, my field of mental health has actually contributed to this. In a major study, a team from a major Australian university followed 7,000 people over seven years. Now, what they found was jobs improved mental health, but only if they were of a certain quality. If any, they were considered demoralizing, they worsened what's known as subjective well-being. Now, the lead author, author there, Peter Buffworth, said the study runs counter to a common belief that any job offers psychological benefits over the demeaning effects of unemployment. That's very interesting. Social workers have made reference to this study when I've tried to get patients of mine back to work. Now, this despite the short-term nature of happiness studies or just subjective reports of mental health, the most of which lack context, or recognise the benefits of uh, the long-term benefits of overcoming short-term adversity. Now, this is where we start thinking of job only for its monetary benefit, or uh, and what actually ends up happening is people start seeing money from welfare as essentially being the same as money from paid work. This is a real problem. Now, I think the declining significance of Christianity is a factor because I think Christianity really gives a sort of innate worth of everyone, irrespective of their economic value. Another thing is the decline of the celebration of manual work. So a lot of movements, labor movements throughout the 20th century did that. Now, as those have declined, mainly through automation or outsourcing, the worth of those jobs have also decreased. Now, the most recent figures in Australia show a 24% decline in manufacturing jobs in the last five years. Now, the larger proportion of the population with a university education increased by a factor of 10 in 50 years has also acted to devalue semi-skilled work, I think. Modern mythologies of work have at the apex the digital knowledge worker, kind of seen as the ultimate expression of work as expressive play. Now, even cities, the way we design cities is aimed at these workers uh, and these residents, and they have their requirement for the low-paid service workers, you know, cleaners, garbage collectors, carers. But most long-term citizen aspirational youth don't want these jobs. They don't want these muck jobs. And the large proportion of newly arrived immigrants working in low paid work have in some respects reduced both the status and the cost of these kinds of jobs. So the kind of ordinary that work once carried an innate dignity for a lot of people is now seen as something for failures and foreigners. Now when you're seen in combination of forces now where proclaiming pain gives you a degree of status and uh, allows you to attract privilege, it's, is it any wonder that those on the border of disability or the precariat i.e. those people kind of in low paid, insecure work, is it any, any wonder that some of them will actually find have greater esteem in disability as opposed to low paid work? If you like that video, subscribe to Rebel Media.